dear colleagues, students, guests. I would like to welcome you to the second lecture in this lecture series that the Faculty of Arts and Sciences has organized to celebrate the 150th anniversary of Robert College and Boazici University. We are very happy to have <laughs> Professor Flipenko uh, from uh, Berkeley. In 2004, he was awarded the Carl Sagan Prize for the popularization of uh, science. It's an honor to have Professor Flipenko with us. Please. Well, thank you very, very much for that very kind introduction. It is such a great, great pleasure for me to be here to help honor the 150th year of Boazici University. How big is the universe? Is it infinite? Or does it wrap around itself somehow? What shape is it? How old is the universe? Is it infinitely old? No, it's not infinitely old. It's about 14 billion years old. Now, that's very, very old, but it's not infinitely old. So we now know how old the universe is, and this was a big time story. You see that, a big time story. When did the universe begin? There's all these little blobs here are galaxies like our Milky Way. There are very few stars in this picture in our own Milky Way. There's a star, there's a star. All the others are galaxies. I could count them. One, two, three, four, five. I could use up my hour counting galaxies, and that would be pretty boring for you. But, you know, it's a, a rather cushy job. They pay us to sit around and count galaxies, okay? Anyway, don't tell too many people. We, we don't need too many astrophysicists in the world. There's considerable confusion between cosmology the study of the structure and evolution of the universe as a whole, and cosmetology, the study of hairdos and facials. <laughs> they do sound similar, I must admit. Make cosmology your career. Training and supervision in hairstyling, <laughs> blow drying, permanent waves, coloring and frosting. You, you laugh, but these are very important topics, okay? So we think the universe itself is expanding, and light stretches with that expansion. Now, we're not expanding because we're held together by electromagnetic forces that overcome the tendency of space to expand. Yeah, why are we at the center? Exactly right. Do these other galaxies not like us? Is it something we said or do we smell? Are all these other galaxies lactose intolerant? Get it? Milky Way galaxy, lactose intolerant galaxy? Oh, yeah. And let me give you an example of a one-dimensional universe where... The ping pong balls are the galaxies, they don't stretch, and the rubber is the space between them. You can see that from the perspective of this ping pong ball, all the others are moving away. But the same can be said from the perspective of any other ping pong ball. They all think that the others are moving away. So you could say in that case that the universe starts with a big bang and ends with a big crunch, a hot, compressed state. Or you could say, Big Bang, Gnab Gib, which is Big Bang backwards. Write them down. <laughs> Big Bang, Gnab Gib. So that's one possible fate of the universe. We want to know what will happen to the universe, regardless of whether it has any practical consequences to life as we know it right now. We just want to know, because we're curious. And moreover, Studying things like this will teach us more about the universe, the laws of nature, and who knows what practical spin-offs there might be. Some stars explode at the end of their lives, becoming up to a few billion times as powerful as our sun. If the sun were to explode, sunblock of 50 just wouldn't cut it, folks. You'd need sunblock or supernova block of a few billion to protect yourself. But don't worry, be happy, the sun will not explode. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, a more obvious solution might be that the universe is two seconds old. If it's two seconds old, obviously, whoa. <laughs> uh, but if my hand pulls up at exactly the same force, then the apple is stationary. There is no net force. In the Star Wars movies, you know, you remember those? May the force be with you. No, George Lucas got it wrong. May the net force be with you, right? The force may be with you, but if some other force is against you, you're going to lose. 
So Lucas needs to go back and take freshman physics, okay? He wrote this famous poem, Fire and Ice. It goes like this. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say in ice. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. So you see, Frost would prefer the collapsing universe that ends in fire. But if the universe and he had to perish twice, then eternal expansion and an ending in ice would be okay with him. And that's perhaps appropriate given his name, Robert Frost. <laughs> well, thank you very much, and I'll be happy to answer questions. Uh, the unsung hero of all this, as you well know, is uh, George's Lemaitre. Yes, Lemaitre, and, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, what I didn't know about him until fairly recently is that he suggested an accelerating universe as early as 1931. I was wondering if, as these galaxies that are supposed to be pulling on each other um, get further apart, whether that force would become weaker on each other and whether that might play into it at all. The slices in the pie change with time. The dark energy is actually becoming more and more important with time overall. So, well, thank you very much for your... Uh... <laughs>